One second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's go. I really enjoy playing and workshopping with, with young people because it's so unpretentious. You know, often you've got an audience of grown-ups and they believe there's a right way to behave when you see jazz. And these guys just were so pure in their response to stuff. You know? I was with 20-plus, uh, I guess, uh, kids from the slums who haven't had, obviously, much of an encounter with jazz music and stuff. So we did this huge workshop and some, some open kind of freestyle stuff, and they really took to it. And they were break dancing, spinning on their heads, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So again, like unbridled and, and uh, unreserved enjoyment they had there. Yeah. So I want you to say your name, but not just the usual way. Fazo went, Fazo! You might go, no. <laughs> so whoever he says his name, you've got to say it the same way. Ready? Wait for it, wait for it. Let's get everyone stepping together. Get ready, get ready. You want to try? So what? So some people with big voices. We've got some break dancers. We've got lots of different people in the group. No, 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 no. Thank you very much. I always kind of enjoyed playing music at some level. I started playing a little bit of piano when I was five, I played clarinet, and then went to a workshop when I was nine years old and had this encounter with this shiny instrument that I saw at the end of the room. I was like, what is that? I want to play that. And uh, from that moment on, really, I had this affinity for the instrument. <laughs> When I was staying with my Nana Ji, my granddad, to start Sabri Khan Sab, even doing my homework, school homework, there was constantly melodies going into my ears. That's what got me attracted to the instrument and to the sound. I just picked up the instrument on my own. My granddad saw me playing and he said, maybe you should learn it, you know. I, I actually saw my uncle, uh, Kamal Sabri Sahab. To, he was doing a lot of experimental work at that time. What is this kind of sound, you know, when Sarangi is playing behind a bass line or a four by four groove. I was like, this is amazing. This, so I wanted to do that. All the learning in terms of music took place outside of an institution. I, you know, pestered elder statesman musicians for like, show me this pattern, show me this lick, show me what you're doing there. I'd go along to concerts, I'd gather up records, go along to the library, get jazz theory books and kind of pursue that passion independently. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface when I'm here. I've met some fantastic musicians, obviously some of whom I'm playing with tonight. I was in Birmingham at my uncle's residence and one of my uh, granddad's students, he lives in Birmingham so he plays in his setup, uh, in Steve Weiss setup in UK and so he recommended my name. I was barely 17, 18 at that time. I was told that the, the concert is in Queen Elizabeth Hall so I was like, wow, okay. Then I see a limousine coming inside that uh, premises with with these kind of big boxes little who called Mr. Y over it and his guitar technicians and suddenly and I was like, who the hell is he? <laughs> then, they, then I got to know that he's the biggest guitar player in the world. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> that's quite awesome. The most important thing is that I listen to everything. I listen to club music, I listen to drum and bass, I listen to classical, I listen to western classical, I listen to Carnatic. To be able to play with something, you should have an idea that what is the originality of this particular sound. That's how I'm able to collaborate, you know. We have a, a really tight unit, a quartet in England, and I normally tour with them. We know exactly what we're going to do next, and it's all pretty organised and arranged. This, we've got some organised moments and there's some stuff that I'm doing solo which is quite scary as well. But, uh, you know, this is going to be very, as you said, organic and uh, extemporised. It's going to be edge of the seat stuff. I'm, I'm excited about it.
classical music is more about improvisation right yeah. so it's like that only we we are improvising here you know only certain a and b sections are structured and we are playing over around them that's what the real collaboration is all about you don't know what's going to happen no one will ever take the sign of strength so far my hiding place i think if it was every night not knowing what i'm going to do next i'd probably have a cardiac arrest so this, this is cool you know once you know, that whole thing of hip-hop and jazz, can it work? If I'd sat in my bedroom and thought about it, it would never have happened. If I'd just go out there and rap and play saxophone, it works. The goal should be to do something very, very original. I live very close to a motorway flyover and I walk past it, you know, every couple of days. I decided, that I just visioned this show taking place. I wasn't sure what it was going to be or how it was going to take shape. But this is now the third year that we've organised a, a big street festival that takes place underneath it. Break dancers, graffiti artists, MCs, jazz musicians, singers. It's another example of this idea seems crazy. But now that we've done it, the press and more artists get behind it. So again, if you have a kooky idea, make it happen. Just because something seems unconventional, I'd encourage you to do it all the more.